Okay, and welcome PCS members and friends to our today's PCS IBS seminar. We are uh, very happy that today, uh, once more, we are hosting uh, Dr. Marko Čosic from uh, Vinča Institute of Nuclear Science in uh, from Serbia. And uh, today, uh, Marko will uh, talk about the morphological analysis of the collagen fiber straightness in the healthy uninvolved human colon mucosa away from the cancer. Uh, please, Marko. And now something completely different and written at the first glance. And I will try to uh, justify why we have here this uh, lung fractal as part of our wall. Uh, so this is something which we try to do almost by accident. Uh, Dr. Sanya Despotovic was my friend. Uh, and we discussed, chatted a little bit about what she is doing. And it turns out that she is analyzing shapes and uh, transitions and changes of the shape. She is actually a uh, trained histologist and she is now uh, a specialization in pathology. And then when we discussed what, we, uh, what she is doing, she is actually doing quite similar work. And it turns out that she actually knows of some very strange book who nobody is able to understand in the field of medicine. Well, this book is René Tom's uh, Structural Stability and Morphogenesis. And it is actually the uh, most famous book in which theory of catastrophe was introduced. So, oh my God, but this is something which I do on a regular basis. So, uh, it's completely different, but only superficially. And I will show you what we did. Uh, so, this is very complicated. Uh, uh, title tells you that we were trying to analyze what happens inside uh, of uh, human colon. Uh, this mucosa is a uh, uh, technical term of uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, colon samples that are taken in webs. Uh, so let's begin. In the old days, uh, cancer and development of cancer was uh, understood as a collection of cells who decided to grow and develop on their own, disregarding uh, resulting organisms. And uh, schematically, uh, you can see here representation of uh, epithelial cells of colon. And when they mutate, they are just replaced by a bunch of uh, cells which do and manage their own business. And in network, modern network representation, well, this is represented by just by no network at all. This network consists on only single one. But it turns out uh, that this uh, picture is over simplistic. Uh, cancer cell can. Uh, secrete uh, many different chemicals which can be used to exchange information among them. They can even influence the environment around them, uh, change it to adopt it uh, more for their growth and progression. Uh, and what one of the most important interactions which they have is with collagen uh, fiber. So naively, because I have no training in medicine, I thought that tissues are a collection of cells. Well, this is actually wrong. Uh, most uh, abundant component, one of the most abundant component of tissues are collagen matrices. Uh, this is not collagen, which you can find in your nails and hair. This is a different type of collagen, so-called collagen type one. And it creates a large scaffold with opening in between places where cell can uh, grow and live, and there you have also places for blood vessel, lymphic vessel, and everything else which is necessary. Uh, so in this modern perspective, uh, we see multiple interconnections between uh, cancer tissue and surrounding tissue and collagen fiber, and this is actually very modern uh, representation with uh, very interconnected network. So interaction with collagen is very important 
Uh, it was total surprise to me when I learned that uh, cells can remodel uh, collagen and to straighten it up. Why? To facilitate the immigration. So they are sense or sense aware uh, of uh, distribution of, for instance, blood vessels. So they will straighten up collagen fibers in that direction so that they, they can able to migrate and to metastasize. So really important. Uh, things to know what things can influence this process. Okay, so uh, collagen is uh, made up of uh, many strings of uh, amino acids which create long change, chains which are uh, twisted around and grouped into the fibers and again those fibers are then grouped into a collection of larger fibers. But what is will be important for subsequent uh, understanding of subsequent slides uh, uh, is to bear in mind that many of uh, those chains are practically parallel and aligned. And this allows us to uh, effectively uh, uh, image only collagen so that we can inspect him much easier way using uh, second harmonic uh, generation. Uh, so because of alignment, uh, if we uh, uh, irradiate collagen with specific wavelength, it would produce second harmonic uh, response, but alignment of this uh, uh, amino acids will amplify uh, this response in uh, uh, parallel to the beam. So uh, if you use a filter to filter out second harmonic generation, you will see an image only of collagen. And uh, if this was done so, and this uh, approach uh, is now standard for analysis of collagen. And to quantify uh, level of its straightness, uh, I must mention that it's only one of important parameters of collagen. So you, uh, distribution of pores is also important and uh, uh, thickness of it and many other stuff are also important. But here we will focus uh, uh, in, uh, on the status of collagen fibers. And uh, in standard approach, they use uh, uh, some general purpose software which tries then when he see image of collagen, he tries then to uh, segment it into this large number of small segments, which are not necessarily connected because this is, you will see in a second why this is a difficult task. So he will then just assign a vector line to each segment and then cal calculate an average. And if this average is small, well, this means that your uh, Vectors are randomly oriented and you don't have any kind of uh, revolting pose, but you have a large value that's more or less uh, uh, aligned. So, but uh, we thought that we can probably do better than this because this approach doesn't uh, take into consideration uh, distribution uh, and actual shape collagen uh, fiber assumes. Uh, so immediately we can see if you permute this sum in arbitrary way, some will remain the same, but the underlying distribution of collagen will be totally different. So what we uh, try to do to improve this. Uh, here you can see uh, some actual samples, uh, which were taken in biopsy in university hospital. Uh, this is one example of a uh, sample taken from the uh, individual who was healthy. Uh, here, you can see sample taken out of cancerous tissue. And in between, uh, you can see a sample taken 10 centimeters away of the cancer. So why uh, we are uh, examining those cases, particular cases? Well, uh, it is known that Fibers will be generally more uh, straightened and more aligned in the case of cancer tissue. And uh, you can clearly see very thick fibers, which 
are practically parallel, large number of them in this case. Uh, in case of healthy individual, you will see no particular uh, alignment. Why? Well, it's easy to understand. Uh, collagen should uh, provide mechanical support, so it should assume such a configuration which can counter the forces and pressures coming from arbitrary uh, direction. So you should not expect any particular orientation in case of healthy individual. And we are examining samples taken 10 and 20 centimeters away from the cancer. Why? Because standard surgical procedures uh, tells you that uh, you need uh, five region five centimeters away from the cancer as affected by cancer, place where significant changes, morphological changes are to be expected. But 10 and 20 centimeters are uh, considered to be uh, totally normal, totally healthy. Uh, and uh, her PhD was to use the standard analysis to show are there any uh, significant modification in this intermediate range and can we use this uh, knowledge to be uh, like early indicators of cancer development. So in essence, uh, how changes are induced when we are approaching from the uh, healthy, non-involved uh, uh, tissue up to the uh, truly modified by cancer. So this is the major thing. And what is the area of size scale of these images? You see that you place pixels, but yes, it's it's in... that the uh, samples are. Uh, uh, I think uh, if I remember correctly, those are centimeters times centimeters uh, samples. So uh, I should maybe better explain uh, sample preparation procedure. So you have uh, some uh, medical condition, you go to the doctor, he will inspect you, he will send you to biopsy if necessary. So he will inspect your cologne and if they found something suspicious, they will take, I think, one centimeter time, it's one centimeter approximately sample, but it depends on severity of your condition. Uh, then uh, this will be then cut into platinum slices because you need to irradiate the laser and we could uh, uh, then uh, detect uh, second hormone generation, which is not too large. So the sample is thickened. Then again, uh, this is a smaller version of it. This uh, you need to be very careful when you analyze those data. Fortunately for me, I have a histologist to select uh, uh, appropriate region for this investigation. I think they are smaller. They are uh, several millimeters times several millimeters. Why? Because a uh, colon is, from our microscopic perspective, just like a cube. But if you go into microscopic region, you will find it's a very complex uh, organ. Uh, and you have blood vessels, something which are called crypts, places where uh, immune cells are located in. Uh, so uh, in case of these cramped regions, regions in between blood vessels, close to the crypts, you will find collagen sufficiently uh, altered. And you can immediately guess if uh, you have a network which need to be squeezed into small space, then it will be artificially more aligned than in general case. So uh, I think those regions of interest, if I remember correctly, are actually several meters times several millimeters. But to study uh, uh, to study straightness, uh, um, we uh, have to concentrate on regions which contain sufficient number of fibers that will give us some useful information, but are not too large because then analysis becomes uh, over involved. Uh, and bear in mind that automatic detection of collagen fibers uh, is a very uh, difficult task. Uh, it was done, fortunately for me, by histologist, by Sanya, but she was a, she needed to be able to uh, inspect this image and then to be sure which structure here are actual collagen fibers. So they are... Uh, certain procedures, how they in histology choose uh, this uh, region of interest. 
But what I should mention also here, uh, that this uh, image can fool you. On average, collagen is more straightened in case uh, uh, close to the cancer and in cancer tissue itself. But those distribution has extremely uh, large, uh, large uh, variation. Uh, so uh, what we have to do now to try to uh, understand what happens inside and to quantify traces of this distribution, but in better way with this uh, initial approach, which in certain sense takes into consideration uh, shape uh, of uh, collagen network. So uh, we proceed in the following uh, uh, way. We take an arbitrary uh, sample. We take an image of collagen sample. Uh, then Sanya will process it and identify uh, fibers. And she will then give me control points. Those are points marked here with uh, black uh, squares. Sorry. Uh, we will then fit this uh, uh, black dots with spline. Then we will inspect is this fit sufficiently good and we, we are satisfied. Then we will uh, clip each line into large number of small segments. And then we will calculate distribution of this line segment angles this line segment make in uh, respect to the x-axis. And one example of this distribution is shown here. Now, tissue is uh, three dimensions. Uh, tissue is in three dimension, but we are what we are expecting here is uh, one thin slice of it. And you are totally right, collagen can uh, assume arbitrary orientation in principle, but in case of Cologne, it is a long tube, so uh, it, it will have collagen which is aligned. More planar because uh, cologne is uh, long and thin. So you are showing the shipping the... Yes, 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 yes. So uh, actually cologne looks something like this. And if you take arbitrary samples, you will see uh, from here, you will see that in this region, they are mostly planary oriented. So if we have a vertical uh, fiber, vertically oriented, we should see it here as a bright dot. For instance, we cannot see isolated, dots. we usually see a line. Uh, and uh, uh, since I can rely on trained histologists, so uh, she claims that she was not able to identify uh, such a proposition. And uh, we are not sure if we'll be able to see uh, it with this technique of second harmonic generation because uh, production of second generation align along uh, fiber. See? So in normal direction, probably in recorded density would be uh, low. Additional reason why this analysis is not so easy uh, exactly as you pointed out this is one cross section of finite thickness so what we are seeing we are seeing all photons generated uh, from the total volume of the sample and this is why we need to have thin samples uh, to be uh, to to see actually this network fiber. Otherwise, if you analyze total volume, this will be total mess. You know, we will not be able to see it properly. Uh, so uh, then what to do uh, with this distribution? Uh, well, it's not so easy uh, to classify shape of this very complicated uh, network. I would prefer to that I can just give uh, two parameters and then some software can recreate this distribution of line. Well, it's not so easy, but what we can do, and which is 
better when we don't do it at all uh, is that we, for instance, try to uh, fit uh, this distribution, experimental distribution, with some distribution which is polymorphic. So, which can change its shape and to accommodate uh, to the data you are observing. So, if, we, for instance, obvious uh, and what we consider to try at the first, we are not satisfied with to fit this with Gaussian distribution. But whatever you do and whatever data you have, your distribution will always be have uh, always have shape of Gaussian. You cannot get anything else. Uh, so we searched the literature a little bit when we found that maybe better approach would be to use this distribution even here, which is known as better distribution. Why? And you will see now in a second, better distribution can have uh, many different shapes uh, depending on the choice of values for parameters of this distribution. Again, what is also better, uh, why we should use better distribution instead of Gaussian? Well, uh, here I have plotted the angles. Angles are confined to the finite interval. Like Gaussian or any other distribution is defined for on infinite interval. Um, so we uh, uh, made fit, and this is one of the examples, uh, fit is uh, rather well. Uh, we need to be very careful because those are angles, and this is actually not an interval, but this is a circle. Uh, so uh, to take this into consideration, we prefer many fits for different uh, circular shift of this data. So I start from this configuration, I make a fit, then I take this beam, move it here and shift everything again. So I perform another fit. So in that regard, I, in that way, I am fitting in this circular uh, interval. Uh, and what I uh, give as a final result is the best fit. So fit has the, the highest quality of fit. And in that way, I identify a uh, correct shift. So if you can notice here, uh, this large peak here is absent, is actually here. So to get this nice fit, we need to, uh, to shift this in angle space further. But with the technical stuff, we correctly take into consideration uh, the logical property that this is not a line, but a circle. Uh, now what to do with it? Well, uh, this figure shows you possible shapes you can get uh, when you uh, change parameters of your vector function. And this is the main reason why they use it in machine learning and deep learning uh, to avoid previous bias uh, of your data. So better distribution can accommodate to your data much better than uh, Gaussian distribution. Why? Because it can change shape. Gaussian cannot. So if you have something uh, which is random, uh, for, for uh, uniform, for instance, you will still have some mean value and some uh, standard deviation. Uh, you can determine this value from statistics, but to treat it, you know, to draw it as Gaussian distribution, you will get totally different shape. You will have wrong conclusion if you don't inspect every instance, real data, and your fit. So, uh, what is interesting here is that although these shapes look complicated, uh, it is not so difficult to classify them. And we can classify them in a standard way, like done in topology, singularity theory, and catastrophe theory. Well, then we spec a uh, number of singular points. In this particular context, because there are many concepts bearing the same name, singular points are critical points. The critical points are maximum and minima, together with uh, vertical and horizontal uh, tangents of your curve. So, uh, and why we classify it in this way? Well, to change the shape, you need to change number of your singular points. And this can all be done in discrete steps. You cannot have one and a half max and one or 1,8 uh, maximums. You can only have 
one or two, etc. And if we uh, take into consideration also inflection points, then we can calculate, then we can classify all these shapes and we can determine uh, areas in parametric space which correspond to each particular shape. For example, if we take alpha and beta to be equal to one, then your beta distribution transforms into a line. If you take them to be uh, corresponding to this point here, it transforms to linear function. If you take it to be here, it will be quadratic function, and so uh, in this region here, you have a horizontal tangent, another one at the end point, two inflection points and one axis. Here you have vertical tangent, one maximum, one inflection point, and horizontal target, and so on. And uh, it's not so difficult when you expect the functional form of beta distribution to find exact these conditions and to classify all these shapes. So when you have alpha and beta parameters determined from your fit, you can immediately say where are you and why is this useful? Uh, for example, uh, what it means to be an ally? Well, intuitively, you need to have distribution which has a large maximum, and this maximum should be as narrow as possible. And you can see immediately, uh, take into consideration, like I did not draw all these shapes uh, into scale, because otherwise we'll probably will not be able to see properly the shape. Uh, so if you want to draw this distribution, which has two uh, horizontal tangents and two inflection points, well, it's automatically narrower uh, then, for instance, distribution from this region here, which has only one inflection point. So you draw it like here, or maybe it's better to draw it here. So if you have two <coughs> horizontal tangents, inflection point, you see, this is much narrower, and this uh, uh, area under it must be one. Then in this case, when you need to have vertical. So what this tells us, uh, how straight your distribution is, uh, can be quantified how far are you from coordinate origin. So uh, if your alpha beta parameters are large, with going to this region here, then the resulting maximum uh, would be very narrow. Uh, we have here, if somebody has noticed, vertical asymptotes, and we go to plus infinity. Uh, well, those are mathematical artifacts which are possible for this particular choice of alpha, beta, uh, alpha and beta parameters, but they don't uh, appear in reality. So if we, uh, and we rarely observe them in experimental data. Uh, so. Uh, in reality, your distribution will be something like this, and this infinite part will be missing. So you immediately can say, well, here there is no uh, preferable uh, orientation. There is no maximum. Uh, same goes here. So if you uh, neglect those infinite points, which probably would not be able to see in real data, how to then get something infinite, out of finite observation, uh, you will see something with distribution which is uh, has one very shallow uh, minimum. Well, this again tells you that you should not expect any particular orientation. So we compress all this data uh, into uh, two classes. We have a class of the shapes which have very well defined maximum. Those are shapes from region four. Is five and they are equivalent. You see immediately that this distribution is symmetric in parametric shapes are symmetrically arranged in parametric space, for instance, here. Uh, those are this is highly oriented forms, 
we call these oriented forms here, and we have this transitional region nine. Here, this maximum is again very shallow uh, compared to this region here, but still it's a maximum. So we call this transitional region, and here when we have minimum, we don't have maximum at all. Uh, we call this unoriented forms. So uh, you can forget all these details, and we can see uh, what we have gotten, uh, how useful uh, it is. So we uh, prefer. I'm, sorry. Yeah, just a question about the, your parameters. So they are uh, positive real numbers. They are positive real. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, somehow you cut them. At, I mean. At yeah. least here showing you cut them at five, but is there a reason? No, or? no, no, there is no if reason. For larger, well, it's the same. Uh, well, uh, you will see uh, they are necessarily positive, but just uh, when I create this kind of uh, graph, uh, I show I saw that there is no point going any further because there are no other significant changes of the shape. So <laughs> as far as you go away in the region five, it will always be shaped like this, but only narrower and narrower. Mm. You see? So I could make a cut uh, even here, smaller one. Um, I, I wanted to have more beautiful graph, so to be like square-like. <laughs> so this is the uh, reason why I cut it here to five. But you will see that we can have uh, alpha and beta parameters of 100. You will see mm. in a second. And okay. the same thing for regions three and four, they they go upward. Yes, yes. When you go upward, so this curve would be uh, single. Yeah, yeah. Single, more single. One example here, this will be like this. So this is distribution uh, of experimentally determined parameters of Beta distribution. This is very bad name. So all the times you have distribution or beta distribution. But <laughs> Pierce invented it and he used great name in statistics, so we cannot change it <laughs> uh, even after he's dead. Uh, okay, into trouble, but uh, this is a distribution of parameters drawn in logarithmic scale. You see, uh, maximum detected uh, value of uh, better parameter was around close to 100. So uh, this is how distribution of points look like. Red points, so uh, red circle or uh, squares corresponds to uh, samples taken out from the cancer tissue. Uh, blue circles are uh, health controlled, healthy sam uh, samples, and uh, magenta, diamond are samples taken 10 centers per okay, and cyan, diamond are samples taken 20 centimeters per okay. well, We chose this uh, color uh, deliberately because, and I will show you in a minute, that uh, these samples uh, 10 centimeters away from the cancer are in a certain sense more similar to the cancer. And this one more similar to the healthy. So CM is like valiant of the blue. And this is like more red than it is not. Uh, what is interesting that you can see white, uh, sorry, uh, blue circles. You can see them. Uh, they are not distributed like naively one would expect in this region where we have unoriented forms. They are widely distributed. And when we uh, calculate distribution of the shapes, so this is part of uh, parameter space divided into this unoriented transitional form and highly oriented forms, you see that distribution is almost uniform. Again, we have only one real data point in this region three, which has the singular maximum. So maybe this is uh, this fit is not too, too good. So we can neglect them. It's very interesting uh, result that we have almost uh, uniform distribution of the effects. Very interesting. Uh, if we take 
another extreme uh, red data points, so red squares, which correspond to cancer. But we will see that most of them are uh, situated in this region five. And total distribution uh, of shapes, you can see most of them are in this region corresponding to highly oriented forms. Uh, and significant part is in the region four corresponding to uh, forms which have very well defined maximum and almost negligible uh, percentage of other forms. This is also interesting uh, conclusion. And when we expected distribution of points uh, 10 and 10, uh, 20 and 10 centimeters away from the cancer, what we can observe, redistribution of those uh, transitional forms in the centrum, which we have this very shallow maximum, you see, they increase number of unoriented forms and mostly increase number of oriented forms. So this transitional layer uh, is characterized by redistribution, like polarization of this distribution into highly oriented form and unoriented form. And close to the cancer, we see another change in the shape, distribution of shape. So this uh, unoriented forms disappear. This is really interesting conclusion, which was, which is not able to obtain using just standard analysis where you cannot see distribution in the shapes. Uh, if we inspect distribution in uh, linear scale and we use just basic uh, statistical analysis, just calculate characteristic ellipse, uh, which is determined by a standard deviation of those distribution points, you will see that largest area is occupied by uh, cancer cells. Uh, smaller, uh, smallest area is occupied uh, by uh, blue data points. But bear in mind that this blue covers uh, the whole parameter plane. So we have all forms. Uh, what we notice that this center of this ellipse of red ellipse is very is displayed uh, by large amount from all other ellipses. This tells us that here highly oriented form really dominates. So what is really interesting that we can see uh, field of this ellipse. So ellipse corresponding to samples. 10 and 20 centimeters away from the cancer are almost uh, same in size. But what we see, tilt of its shape, and then when you go really close to the cancer, uh, size of this ellipse will should increase large amount, and its center should uh, display it here. So uh, this behavior is maybe also interesting uh, to see. Uh, or maybe can be used to be like early indication of cancer development. Yeah, the project, I think it would be important to verify, for example, for the case of the blue dots, yes. I think it would be important to verify if this kind of dispersion yes. is a dispersion in tri single path patient in which you take several samples but for the single patient or not. Because if it's coming, I mean, we have mixed. We have yeah, several. We have several that cases. Suppose that you come yeah. with a patient. Yes. Uh, it is possible that you get, uh, let's say, very yes. upright, yes. and you cannot distinguish if it is a cancer or not. Yes, this is the problem. Uh, so exactly. at the level of diagnostics, I don't think it's very, let's say, no, but it's not one. This is just one, and doctors don't use this for analysis. They use yeah. many different parameters. Yeah. But those are indicators. Okay. okay. Uh, you you will not be classified. Don't worry. Nobody will give you diagnosis based on this. Don't yeah, worry. yeah, it's just working progress. Okay, <laughs> you're totally right. This is something that we try together in collaboration. It would be to improve. To get, to yeah. get find a car, a person that is many yeah. examples. Exactly, but yeah. this is problem with yeah, yeah, yeah. this is clearly problem. You yeah. see, when I 
with my student comes to my office. You want to give, data to, give, uh, to give the samples? <laughs> this is a good idea. Yeah. But when he comes to my office with this amount of data points, I kick him out. I say, calculate millions of points. You know, you, you will just run with generated map. But this is proof problem. Know, this is know. the biggest problem in the uh, For standard of physics, uh, bear my English, but this is pure shit. You see? 100 points come on yeah. but this is why uh, analysis of the logical system is extremely difficult how to get millions of samples we should have clone yeah this would be proper way and then to analyze him every day for all his life yeah, yeah. and then we will have a problem to guess what happens with a different individual right because uh large dispersion is the uh, whole mark of biological systems right so uh, we are totally aware of this. So uh, what we want to capture dynamics of change of the shapes mm -hmm. and to improve standard approach at least little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we are aware of this. Point. Yeah, we would like to be able to avoid it in this way. Uh, and this is, of course, this is one of the first that we made. We try to improve this. And what we have uh, done here during my stay here in collaboration with uh, Sergey, well, we try to uh, do rock group analysis. So what uh, this should give you, well, imagine that you uh, have two data sets. So one is, uh, for example, uh, healthy and everybody else, or another possibility is to have uh, cancer data cells, uh, samples, um, data corresponding to the cancer and everybody else, and you want to see how to classify it. So you draw basically a line in a parametric space, which represents a threshold, and you see how many of them uh, from the left side, which corresponds to region of cancer, and how many are outside. And you can see and calculate how many of them are collectively classified and how many of them are falsely identified. For, for instance, if you and you plot these uh, uh, percentages for different uh, position, different value of the threshold. So if your threshold uh, is too high, well, you have not classified any. So this is not useful, but you have not made any mistake. But if it is too low, well, you classified everybody and everybody was uh, correctly classified, but you also made the same amount of error because everybody are cancer, uh, classified by cancer, uh, to be cancer. But uh, in between, uh, we can see, uh, regardless of uh, value of the threshold, so this graph here shows you uh, probability to be classified correctly uh, as a member of uh, this region corresponding to the cancer. And false positive rate is always less than true positive rate. So this is uh, uh, we can do this. And in case of uh, no correlation at all, well, our uh, uh, curve would be linear. And since we are very far away from this uh, uh, linear identity curve, uh, this gives uh, confidence that this is. Uh, correct that we can find a uh, very well defined line which can be used as discriminator if we have, for instance, new data points, how to classify them according just to their position. I uh, think, what is the age of uh, sorry? patients? Age of patients, usually they were uh, very old. Uh, they are listed here, sorry. You see, uh, those are people who were suffering for or suspected to have colorectal cancer. So uh, their age is uh, advanced, let's put it this way. Can you say that healthy if you also are unhealthy? <laughs> Sorry? Because the older age, age people have the yes. upper type yes. of, uh, yes. type of, uh, of course. disorder. If you only separate of the cancer and yes. non, non cancer, right? Yes. Yes. So if you want to do this, uh, how accurate your prognosis would be. So this is what we try to, to add to our analysis. Another 
Another question you could ask, okay, analogous one, you separate your data set into two groups, healthy and non-healthy, and try to do the same analysis, and you will, you will get uh, this uh, curve. So if you compare those two, well, uh, you will see that uh, uh, true positivity rate is not uh, always much larger than false positive rate, like in this case here. So what this tells us, well, this tells us that uh, samples taken 20 and 10 centimeters away are more uh, red distribution, statistically more similar to distribution of cancer cells. Uh, can you explain difference between two? And uh, this rock curve in a nice way uh, uh, proves and confirms our previous analysis, which was obtained uh, in standard way and analyzing the distribution of uh, uh, shapes. And also one interesting uh, one interesting finding was, uh, well, we were interested uh, what is the, the info, uh, entropy of those distribution and uh, why? Well, if you think about state of equilibrium uh, corresponding to the health, in Belgium they call it homeostasis, uh, and you think what is normal function of the collagen fiber, well, it is uh, to provide mechanical support to counter forces uh, all our direction. So it distribution of the shapes could be probably uniform. Uh, it could be narrower to, be, to uh, get into these crampy regions, uh, close to creeps, etc. And this is similar to what we uh, observed here. So uh, information entropy uh, was largest in this particular case. And if you think about uh, cancer as state very far from this homeostasis, well, it is not surprised that uh, these states correspond uh, to the state of low, low entropy. And entropy uh, steadily uh, increases how you move away from the cancer. It's something interesting, and we would like to be able to test it uh better to have much more data points but uh, medical uh, uh, protocols prevents us to take samples arbitrarily far from the cancer so uh, to have my student to, to force him to give the samples is really not the best idea <laughs> but unfortunately it's not medically ethical in the modern way in the modern times i just to come out cancer is Information is, uh, we have some people have a uh, suffered cancer. That means the information is very correct. Healthy is a very different type of, uh, yeah, yeah, some, some clone or foreign types. You think about the real not healthy people. Yeah. Dip, yeah. Some people have a different uh, yes. uh, clone yes. yeah, condition. And that is the very variety of condition. Yes, cancer is a special type. So very few small you only restrict the some distribution. Uh, well yes. it yes, it it uh, induces very strong polarization of this equilibrium distribution. You see, we have domination of or highly oriented forms as we expected. But what I wanted to show, and what in my opinion is interesting, that this is highly abstract. But my, presentation. my point is uh, if you not focus on the cancer, the other clone, specific clone disorder, that case also is similar ocean. Uh, maybe, but I don't know if I will be able to see uh, remodeling of collagen in that case. It's not, uh, uh, I don't know actually. We need to ask Sanya to answer this question. Unfortunately, I cannot answer. But in my opinion, what is interesting, uh, this is very abstract uh, representation of what happens inside the clone, and still 
it seems uh, that changes of this distribution follow the known law of statistical mechanics, something you would expect to see. And I was actually surprised to see that this logic makes any sense. I didn't expect to see this uh, uh, result to behave this way. And I should say that uh, changes, you know, are not on the 10th uh, decimal place. You know that this is, you know, larger than this is uh, smaller than this is larger by 10 to the minus 10 increment or something like that. Uh, change is uh, visible and you can calculate it. So it's not so difficult because our distribution has only the uh, uh, and less than nine points taken into consideration. Okay, so that's all. Uh, we can draw some uh, conclusions. Well, we saw that it is possible uh, to uh, link changes in organizational closure fibers with uh, metamorphosis of better distribution. Uh, we were able now using this additional information to uh, classify uh, inequivalent shapes into different groups. So shape without local maximum unoriented volumes, shapes with one less pronounced maximum. So those are the central region. Uh, positional forms which have uh, one vertical critical point and maximum and uh, highly oriented forms with forms which have very well defined maximum, narrow maximum, and two inflection points. Uh, we have found the samples uh, of healthy tissue contain equal amount of all four. This is surprised at the first glance. And we have observed polarization this distribution in the case of sample taken closer to the cancer. And we saw that the distribution of forms uh, from cancer tissue is dominated only by kind of Sorry. I was surprised and I was very pleased to see the changes in this uh, distribution of shapes, just abstract of abstract uh, quantities still behave what we would expect from assigning just this principle that long lasting equilibrium state uh, must be linked to the state of maximum entropy. Um, and uh, we have shown that uh, uh, we can quantify level of the stateless of the collagen fiber by the uh, finite uh, 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 full width at half maximum uh, of this very well pronounced uh, maximum. And we can discriminate uh, cases when we don't have such, for instance, when we have no maximum at all, then this fin figure doesn't exist, it's not defined. But if you use standard deviation, like in what your logic tells you immediately, well, this quantity is defined everywhere and you will get some value, but this value can be meaningless. Uh, so in, in, in the sense, we have improved standard, uh, standard uh, approach, at least a little bit. We saw that we now have much, much uh, detailed information and much more interesting system to study. Uh, if we didn't consider this case, and uh, what we have done, well, we we perform uh, analysis, which we usually do when we analyze uh, label patterns and label scattering in uh, transmission of positron proton beams or ion beams uh, to crystals. Uh, so uh, this was not totally different as it was uh, maybe looked like uh, at the beginning. So thank you very much. For thank you very much. Interesting uh, presentation and uh, we have uh, time for questions. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I have two very naive questions. Firstly, um, what another kind of tissue could be used for other samples? Not the column from the column samples, but the other ones. And the second question um, there is a lot of organs near in proximity of 20 centimeters of the colon. Uh, could cancer of uh, this organ can be detected uh, in this way, or just cancer in the colon? Thing? 
Uh, well, idea is to investigate the uh, thing which will be uh, affected the most. And probably colon itself will suffer morphological changes uh, before it, these changes are so large that it affects neighboring organs. Uh, regarding your first question, collagen is present everywhere. So this analysis could be done uh, for any other tissue, but uh, this is done specifically to analyze uh, uh, colorectal cancer. Why? Because we already have uh, possibility to obtain samples. Uh, so biopsy of uh, colon is done on a regular basis when they are suspecting colorectal cancer. Why? Uh, for different uh, type of cancer of different organ, different methods are used. So, uh, we do this because we have, for biology, ample of samples. Thank you. And what about skin? What about skin? Yeah, so, uh, so is the collagen in your skin? Yeah, yeah. Collagen is everywhere. Collagen is everywhere. In principle, this can be done. This can be done. They can be different. They can be, I think, uh, I don't see any, any principle obstacles when you should not be able to do it with the skin. So it's relatively easy to get the sample. Uh, yeah. Then you need to slice it, but what is difference when you slice uh, the cologne? I don't see any difference. Uh, I don't know if there is maybe easier way in case of the skin, but uh, this should be possible. Okay, do we have any further questions? Seems not, so let us uh, thank Marco again. And with this, we conclude our.